locations differ, like night and day. But each team has seen their share of the light. The Gators have shocked the world. The Florida Gators have won another national championship. Miami upsets the top-ranked Nebraska. Glory days that stretched into legacies and created legends. For over 75 years, the Gators and the Canes have sought the spotlight in the Sunshine State. We got to win. Win the rest of our lives. Resumes right now. This point, I don't let him up. Stadium in Orlando, middle ground between the two campuses in Gainesville and Coral Gables. Great hype and build up as the Hurricanes and the Gators collide and each trying to launch a special season. And welcome, Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit, and if Dwayne The Rock Johnson <laughs> and Tim Tebow wow. and Ed Reed couldn't get you. Trask and the Gators getting their first possession from the 25. Comes from the Houston area. Now, De'Aaron King was the starter, and he was the stud there. 6A state record, so Trask couldn't find the field. And no way was the team going to take the risk and give a guy a scholarship, a quarterback who didn't start a game. Finally, Jim McElwain, Doug Nussmeyer took a chance. Trask has rewarded that trust. Trask. It's going to be swarmed and dropped behind the line. And 11. Trask down the seam, and it's huge. Chunk plays for this Hurricane offense on the opening drive. It's the linebacker play right here. Get a little confused. Lose there. We talked about him being a matchup problem. It's pretty easy with a linebacker out of position. And now you can see he has wide receiver speed. Now, can they cash in the red zone? This was a problem for the Hurricanes offense in recent years when Mark Rick was calling the plays. Should look to the boundary to get there with his legs. Takes a shot, but earns the touchdown. Jones banged into him, but King pays the price. And this touchdown will count. Trask against a four-man rush, delivers high. Intercepted! First appearance in 2020 with the turnover shape. Through year, it, and it's gotten, I, I would say, bigger and flashier every year. They ripped the 305. Now it's the whole state of Florida. Energy. This is a team right now. King rolls out, looks downfield, Potter's in the clear, it's a foot race! And the Gators will finally chase him down inside the 10! Down deep, Wiggins! Well, to get a reaction like that from Red Lashley tells you that they worked on that play all week, knowing that they'd get a certain look, and when they do, you gotta make the throw. Harris. Dives! Touchdown, Miami! Two possessions and two scores for the game. Chris Fowler back with Kirk Herbstreit, Alice Miami. The 14 years who have continually come from a touchdown behind must come from 14 downs. Five receivers, empty backfield, plenty of time on the clock. Trask against the four man rush, delivers high. The Gators hit a deep ball. Fight and escape as he close enough to Diaz. Rose Throws that ball early. Watch him anticipate this. Throw that ball well before Copeland was at the top of his route. And that shows you the confidence that Trask is playing with. Trask and fires. Hits. Touchdown. And the first time Rhodes Tarter looked cool on that drive, didn't he? Well, he sure did. Showed patience this time. Again, give the offensive line a lot of credit. That was fantastic by Kyle Trask. Working left, working left, trusting his offensive line, comes back and finds the throwing. Nice job of working through his progressions. Harris off and try to show his quickness to the edge, and the Gators are all over it. 
You know, they, you suck it they, they, they want to. If you're going to throw and trick us, fine. Throw it and see if you can complete it. But as soon as he initially goes to his left or to his right, it's a race to the corner. Who can get the third running play called? And Harris, good job. To he does a good job. The defense flies around, rolls and throws. On. It'll be third down. Yeah, you see eight. Leads the universe in tattoos. I ask him how many, but it's kind of all just one. Yeah, that's right. Along the forearm is the favorite tattoo of him. It's, it's a cow being abducted by an alien spaceship. You need to say nothing else about the dude that he has that tattoo. He said he'll be nervous, though. Western Australian drives it low, and it's returnable for a change of quarterback, Kirk. Emory Jones, we knew we'd see him. Jones looking to throw, lobs into the end zone. The ball caught, touchdown! Kadarius Tony. How about the throw effort, effort by Emory Jones to put it up, give his players a chance to make a play. And both Gator quarterbacks have been outstanding. They've been two 75 yard touchdown drives for the Gators. 12 plays, then 13 plays, and this game even again at 14. What a play! Pontiac G6 halftime report. The Buckeyes found a way to get by. Mark and Lou will join me. We'll talk ramifications all when you come back to the studio at halftime. See you in a bit. The Florida's national championship coaches both here. Urban Meyer wearing a Gators shirt. That might surprise some Florida fans, but he was invited back. Only game he could see because he's got TV news on another network. And of course, the head ball coach. Great to visit with him. So, talking about Florida football. Miami football is a lot of fun. He wants you to know that his team in the Alliance League won the championship. The Orlando Apollos right here in this town. Hell yeah. The crown champions. And leaving it right there is Jeff Tom. First down, they'll flip it short, and they've got Jordan the tight end. And he's got some space. He's dragged down by Sean Cameron Harris. You know they're not going to catch him. Jones back in the game. It's a straight run, and we're seeing shades of Chris Leak and Tim Tebow when Mullen was the <laughs> right. offensive coordinator for, for Urban Meyer. They kind of rotated within the game, well, playing different roles. It feels like that. You're right. Now, we're so under. while he's shuffling these quarterbacks in with his headset's kind of off, he's got to also be aware of the time. And... Trask back in. Far side throw, catch made by Jacob Copeland and Trask Sharp yeah. again. Gators in business inside the 40. Well, he's sitting in no man's land in that pocket right now. Involved. Florida lost a great quarterback in Felipe Franks, a veteran guy who's played in a lot of games, and everybody wondered how they're going to do with Kyle Trask, who, who hasn't played a lot of football. He stepped in down 21 to 10 in the fourth quarter against Kentucky in Lexington, brought them back. He's played very well since then. Dan Mullen deserves a ton of credit, along with Brian Johnson, a quarterback coach of putting him he just looks technically so sound so efficient and he looks confident with his decisions tonight in a very tough environment against an athletic defense sure does he's trying to get even before half time five receivers empty backfield plenty of time on the clock jones steps up and we'll take a downfield shot and a new score <laughs> Kirk, they strike deep. You're going to see one of the big areas of improvement besides the quarterback, and that's the kicker. Laura Gallas, we talked about his success at FIU, was drives it right through. Manny Diaz said he's a game changer. They struggled mightily last year in close games. Field goals cost them a few victories. They love the guy they've got now. Back to the studio now, the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Let's have a look at the scores from around the country. Several surprises today. This is a game we've been watching closely all day long. And for Arkansas, here's a team trying to win the first game of the year. Arkansas Legion, 14-7. The Aggies up front beat their aerial assault and score a touchdown. The Aggies on top by three. In other actions, the Nippy Lions came into the game ranked seventh. They're now fighting jumping. Board's gonna break. And for Syracuse, 
Here's DC starts with a win. Scoring 20, 24-23. Miami with a 90-yard drive to take the lead before halftime. They're the team that's the underdogs. They're the team that didn't feel a whole lot of respect from the nation or the other side coming in, and they've got the lead despite a lot of mistakes. Well, we saw a lot of momentum swings. I mean, Florida, uh, in their first series, three and out, all of a sudden, deep in their own defense, a ton of credit because the main reason Miami is in this game is their defense had their backs against the wall, came up with play after play, and especially those turnovers to get the ball back. Maria? Yeah, Chris, and the message for Manny Diaz and his team was all about momentum. It's about starting fast, coming out of the locker room, and finishing strong as this game comes to a close. But really the message he wanted to deliver to his team is playing to their potential. He said, imagine if we didn't have any penalties or we made all the tackles that we were supposed to, that we would be up even more in this matchup. No one expected us to be here, but we are here right now. So just playing cleaner football could get us the win in this one. And that defense will be on the field momentarily back in the game on second and ten that's good news King from the pocket takes off has yardage lowers the shoulder shows some toughness that'll impress teammates Ventrell Miller the linebacker watch how slow he is worried about play action pass to fill again the athletic ability to pick up some big yards and he picks up a first down King big crease busted to the open down the sideline Touchdown, Miami! Jones is running all the way and wide open. Pitts running free. And the tight end continues to be a weapon. Jones still a quarterback. Option look to the boundary and a pitch late. Grimes still battling. Grimes trying to get upfield, uses his speed to run away from the linebacker. linebacker. And 10, Trask gets the ball out quickly. It's a slant, which thrown behind his receiver. In zone, he just quick, the ball gets out quickly. It's against his pass rush when they turn the loose to linebackers. You got to get the ball out of Trask's hand. And the crowd roaring each time. Tremendous job with the Gator offense. Now it's an option look, and Trask with that brace on the knee keeps it, catches him napping, and gains eight yards. He ended off for Damian. Now busting into the clear. He scores a touchdown. Another long, impressive drive by this Gators offense. A tremendous fourth quarter team haven't allowed a point in the last five fourth quarters but their offense will have to come from behind we've got a good one 15 minutes to play florida 28. Emory jones now into the lineup See if they try to spread this canes defense out and try to win some one-on-one -on -one battle something that's been very challenging for them against a cane secondary that's breaking in three new starters that's holding up point. they thought they could make plays downfield that was the concern for diaz and the defense giving them up Jones back by those fires and wide open down near the 10. Get your breath because they're often playing fast at the big play. Second and four. Rask. Malik Davis. Touchdown! Dan Mullen, you might say, why are they running the ball here in the fourth quarter? That, that's actually been a strength of theirs. Dan Mullen told us this week, we can't abandon the running game. It may not work, but look what they've done in the fourth quarter. King fires long throw to Pope, who makes the catch, slips the tackles. Very poor tackling by that Florida Gators secondary. Unwillingness to make a play. Strong words, and I agree with you. Is Grantham going to blitz? Is he going to sit back? Showing it. King up, still surveys the field. Has a man wide open. And that's Brevin Jordan, the tight end. How do you lose the field? Miami reclaims the lead. How about the answer by Miami? Here's our Pacific Life game summary. Once again, back to work from the 25. Handed off for Damian Pierce. 
Dan Mullen saying, let's not get cute with this. Let's get the big back end and run downhill and just kind of wear on the Miami defense. Challenge them. Go to a different formation, same personnel group. Rask, slant, caught. Be Copeland, number 15, makes the catch. Five receivers, empty backfield. Plenty of time on the clock. Trash, pass and top, takes a downfield shot, but it's overthrown, no chance for Trask from the pocket. He has good protection on first down and takes another downfield shot, but it's overthrown, no chance for Previous play is under further review. And, uh, they're definitely going to take a look at that. Yep. Jack McDonald is the replay official in this Big 12 crew. He buzzed down. It was confirmed. The call proving huge as the Gators will have a first and goal. Jones back in the game. Bobby, get Jones on the edge. Clock at five. There he goes. Straight run. And he is with that quickness going to gain first down yardage. Gators with a first and goal. Jones back there, which makes it feel a little different. More receivers to the left. That's Jones is running all the way. Touchdown! And the Gators are on top. For Dan Mullen to not hesitate at all, not just with Trask, but also bringing in Emory Jones and kind of throwing havoc into the wind. One of the defining plays of the game, and the young quarterback pressure. Quarterback down, and the Gators make a stand. And the timeout paid off. Sure did. They just pinned their ears and came out. Needed a miracle before on fourth down. Gators defense trying to summon all the energy they got left. And takes a downfield shot. And that should do it. That goes over on downs. He fought hard, but Todd Grantham's defense, aggressive by nature, fast, ferocious, and overmatching Miami's young offensive line and victory formation for Florida. They had to fight hard. Favorites in this game who expected to roll. The Gators got what they expected, a victory, and Miami showed up, competed, but coming up short. Heck of a game. Here, Kyle Trask very well prepared. Dan Mullen brought his team in. They faced some adversity. Lost a number of players that they were really counting on. Mullen's not into moral victories, but they should be proud of the way they played through some adversity.